begin the class properly now. So you've done a little bit. Have you given yourself a chance to soften your neck, please? Oh, Helen, I just want to say there is a lot of wrist and shoulder work today. So Helen, make fists, spread your hands differently, a little bit of cushioning. You know how you can get a little, little bit of cushioning under the heel of the hand or the forearm? Do as much as your body really in, enjoys and leave out some stuff that is, is painful or sore. Yeah, of course, Helen. Helen's got a little bit of, she's got a lot of tenderness in her wrists. Okie doke. All right, so we're going to begin. Finding mountain pose, Tadasana, or a really comfortable yoga seat. And you can even sit in a chair, an upright chair, for this first part of the practice, if that suits you. So today we're going to look at yoga poses that help us to connect to our shoulders to our upper back to to strength through the body but also we're going to connect to flu fluidity fluidity and flow in the arms and in the shoulders and the wrists and the fingers and we're going to try and embody the sense of the scapulae so we're going to begin with a, a traditional yoga practice called palming and essentially Bring your palms together in Namaste and rub the hands vigorously together for some time while you breathe comfortably. And you can also sort of swap the hands over. So you can start in this kind of format and then you can maybe turn. So you've got right hand on top of left, and then left hand on top of right. And what this does, uh, because the hands make up, um, I think it's a third of the brain matter, this is really allowing us all to wake up the brain, wake up the neural pathways. And you might start to feel some tingling going through to your actual shoulders. Now traditionally in yoga, when we use the palm, it's at the end of class, and then we place those palms over the eyes. Well, we're not going to do that part. What we're going to do is with these beautiful, warm, warmed up hands, inhaling, exhaling, we're going to stroke down the shoulder and the arm now. So imagine, stroke down your body. So imagine you've come up to practice today, you've woken up and you've got a little bit of tension. Give yourself a little hug, breathe in and breathe out and actually stroke down. You can stroke all the way down to the feet and toes. You can come up again, stroke down your arms. You might want to do this kind of action. So what we're doing is we're inhaling and as we exhale, we're grooming, we're grooming ourselves. So imagine now maybe a cat, and how you might see a cat grooming itself. You can stroke down your body as you exhale. You can stroke down your own back. And you know that I've been attending the embodiment conference for the last however many days. It finishes soon. <sighs> Inhale and exhale. This does not have to be perfect. And you know, it's, it's really important. You can come in and out of your actual fingers and stroke there. You can stroke along the inside. But what is helpful is to stroke and press down as if you are, as, as if you are uh, releasing uh, any tension down to Mother Earth. And then another lovely thing to do is just stroke around up to the forehead and then push 
the skin of the forehead back and go over the skull. So you, you place the palms across your face, maybe stroke up the forehead, and then add, you notice your elbows come out, you might wanna wing them out at this point, and then stroke down the skull and into the neck. Um, and another thing that you may wanna try is just bringing your arm and the lower arm coming over and stroking across the face and around. You know how a cat would lick her paw and arm and then clean her face? And this is a lovely soft flowing energy. Um, and it's really you want to think about as you create these motions, you might want to think about the luxurious way that a cat especially washes her face and grooms herself and in this world we're living in where touch has become something quite weird and fearful and strange and then you can bring it across the body differently you might want to stroke across your ribs and chest and as you do this open up so open up the side linger there and then imagine that cat going mm -hmm, and licking and releasing uh, not sure if dogs do it quite the same coming across, you might want to put the hand on the leg, hip stroke, and then come up to the face and breathe and exhale and slide away. And the thing about the embodiment conference, of course, keep going with any more strokings that you wish, any more sense of self-grooming. Um, the thing about the conference is there's so many extraordinary uh, world-renowned tutors, as well as less famous, all giving so much love and connection and so much body work, so much dance, creativity, therapy, resilience, trauma. The, the 12 channels, there were a thousand speakers and I learned a lot. And some of the speakers I saw, of course, were my favorites. So I saved their sessions or tried to watch them later. And likely I will buy the conference as well. So let's release from our kind of, you know, all of that kind of stroking and touching. And then let's come into some light or full arm circles. So I'm gonna just shake out the arms now. And feel free also to shake out your legs. If you are, if you're in standing mountain and you feel a bit static, you know, you wanna just give yourself a little walk around, that's absolutely fine. So we'll restand at some point, release the arms. Crown is on top, chin is level. I'm going to start with reversing circles. So I'm going to do this feeling of these little wings. Maybe I reach out and spread the fingers and palms, and I'm going maybe 10 small. Remember to breathe and relax the places that can relax. I'm going into 10 medium. Softening the knees. And then I'm going into 10 large. Uh, pausing to come forward for 10 large. <sighs> Let the breath out through mouth if necessary. If you lose count, it's okay. And then just maybe the mediums. <sighs> Make time to breathe. And then the 10, the small ones. Breathing and moving. And then I'm going to float the arms forward and again spread out the fingers. And now move your awareness, please, into your scapulae. And as you reach, it's actually coming from the scapulae and then draw back. So extend and draw back. And this is, if I go faster, creates, as you can see from the movement on my t-shirt this morning, my yoga vest, it creates a kind of rotation through the rib baskets, eyes into the horizon. And this is known as shoulder slings in somatic work. And often we do this lying down. And after a while, you may want to relax because it will create movement in those clavicles as well, in the collarbones. 
And then secondly, maybe let's make fists. So drive those arms forward more purposefully and then create a double action. So draw the scapula back and then reach forward. But remember that we're trying to connect to that feel sense of the movement in the shoulder blades, not the arms. So I'm not reaching forward, reaching the whole body. So steady tonality. You want to feel really strong here. And if you need to, you can put a palm around the rib basket or the belly and you can move with one. Yeah. So we, we've, we've practiced protract and retract and I often just call this plug and unplug it's something we also do in all fours so can you remember that movement please because we'll we'll repeat that when we're in the all fours so protract retract and this is really good for desk workers and office based workers and working from home workers because we get stuck the shoulder blades get frozen on the back we end up with a frozen torso frozen torso won't help you breathe now let's move to singles. So I am going to place my left hand either on the rib basket or around the front of the body or even on the belly. And I'm going to go in and out for 10, 9, 8. <sighs> Try not to bend the elbow. So keeping a firmness and also not to let that shoulder rise up. And, and remember that you are looking in your mirror if you have one. And you can move slow or you can move fast. Tonality again, keep connected. Let's do same action in the second arm, a little bit of a smile. Do you have enough time to pause and notice? Do both of those scapulae, um, do they both respond equally or is there a little bit of tension? And Nikki, I know you mentioned a little tensioning in your neck today and a little pain. And sometimes that will be almost in the shawl of muscles, the trapezius especially which if you look at the trapezius, it's in the coming from here, you know, from the upper uh, portion of the neck at the, the top of that skull there and then flowing down in that shawl-like manner. So sometimes it feels like that in the neck. Okay, let's shake that out now and bring your palms forward into, so from Namaste, finding again your mountain, reach your palms forward, maybe thumbs are up. And then press the hands really, really strongly together. So press the right into the left and hold steady for about five seconds. And notice how well this stimulates the muscles in the chest. But what else are you noticing? So let's really be in tune with this forward uh, Anjali Mudra. And you may want to bring your eyes to look at the thumbs and it's fine if you raise the arms a little bit notice that or it's fine if you lower them inhale exhale press and create resistance and then bring the elbows bent so we'll create the resistance through the forearms so this looks like eagle but it's a single binding mudra not the double let's again maybe gaze to the fingernails or drishti on the thumbnails press and breathe and that's why I suggested you can always sit for this practice so you can stand all the way through and be uh, toning the whole body in standing mountain or of course you can sit. Let's not forget our feet, make sure they are spreading and grounded. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. And then what range of motion do you have there? Can you soften that, bring it back together in a softer way and maybe you've got a gap between the elbows. That's okay. If you need to work with that gap, then be kind and compassionate. Please don't force. I've got quite a narrow shoulder range. And if you've got that, it might be easy to join the bones together. And let's slide up and down. Slowly, you may find you slide up a little bit more. You may even want to just create an opening, back bend there, a little mild front opening. And then we'll bend knees and rounding in. Breathing in as we lift to stand neutral or gaze to the sun and exhale, grounding in. One more like that, inhale and soft pressing or firm pressing. And then reach back, 
those arms are coming forward, shoulders down. Inhale, open wide and feel the scapulae squeeze together. And remember that thing at the start about try not to have that turtleneck, so let's try not to push that chin forward. And then flow open. Softly return to Namaste. Now make a clasping. So form a little cup with the hands, one on top of the other. And as you interlace those fingers, pull them apart. You know that so often I've told you this, that in yoga and in fact Pilates, there's a lot of pushing of the pressing of the arms away. You know, all fours, tabletop poses, planks, down face dogs, up face dog cobra. We're pushing here. So now let's create pulling action. So give yourself a little break, a little shoulder roll if that's feeling strange. And then let's understand and connect to the discomfort and pull the part. And have a look, I've got my left hand on top of my right. And I know it's my left because it's the one where my watch is. <laughs> so let's pull apart and breathe and feel. Hold as you create that almost a trembling and you can even raise your elbows and you can even pull apart in different positions and explore. And we can take a little bit of grip, releasing here and even a little turning and a wiggling and a circling, circling. And shake that out, other side, right fingers on top of left, or you've changed the other way. And again, pull apart. Maybe you pull apart at the heart center, maybe at the navel. So can you please explore? So let's pull apart and feel the action of pulling. And in the pulling apart, apart from strengthening fingers, you're likely to feel this in the biceps. So notice that, do you notice some strength coming into your upper arms? You might want to pull apart at the Vishuddhi chakra area or Ajni, you can pull apart at the forehead and you can pull apart above and again if you need a little dancey wiggle, maybe a circle, and breathing and feeling and then release that, lovely arm swinging. Ah, and then for me, I find that as soon as I start swinging those arms, I really want to swing the body. So join me if you wish. Breathe in, exhale. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. <sighs> and this does not have to be very prescriptive. It can be really free flowing if your body is okay with that. <sighs> Do remember to take care when we get to the top. Circle arms back slowly. Let's inhale up to the sun and exhale and circle arms back. Really, really, that's the progression of how well your shoulders create what's known as circumduction. Maybe we do a single arm. Inhale, turn, rotate, and flow. And inhale, exhale, turn, rotate, and flow. Okay, fabulous. And then let's finish this first journey around some of the actions of the shoulders and warming up by bringing our elbows into those side ribs. So rotate so the palms turn up. And imagine you're holding two beautiful palms of open energy. Palms open in yoga, shunya mudra. And we're gonna go out like little wings really rapidly, but try and keep the elbows tucked into the side body. Try not to create pinchy tension in your neck. And can you get faster? Oh, it's like a crazy chicken. <sighs> chicken wings, wing, wing. It's not really like wings, is it? Anyway, <laughs> have some fun with that. Can you notice stimulation across the chest? And then pop the fingers in. And there's some little actions there. Internal rotation as you pause and round again and external as you roll back. So you get that feeling of the chest collapsing and you might wanna look down and then open out. And as we open, let's stay open, bird wings, hook the thumbs and just draw those arms back really definitively. 
Here is another example where you would love to be connected very well to your head, to the chin, to the alignment of the eyes. And also, are you pulling down or away or a little bit of both? Two more really calm, focused rounds of breath in that arm pose, the arm mudra. Allow breath to flow freely and then release arms and turn the right palm up and the left palm down and we get that rolling Egyptian and then we can start dancing a little bit with that. <sighs> Inhale and exhale, maybe you look left, maybe you look right and left and right and left. Yeah, so enjoy that Egyptian arms practice. And now let's come to our yoga mat and find a beautiful flow for strength, for resilience, for focus and determination. I'm going to invite you into some, um, I'm going to invite you into some longer holds here and there, and you can choose what that means and how that resonates in your body. So first of all, let's be at the top of the yoga mat and reconnect again to yoga mountain pose. Let the arms dangle, shake the arms away and then inhale and whole inhalation is full and blossoming and you may lift heart away from the pelvis just moderately, uh, that's absolutely fine. You may be bending into a really powerful standing backdrop. Exhale as you fold over the knees, crown down, and let's all pause and just shake out the weight of the head. Do your back palms rest, and if they do, let them pop down and rest. And give your legs a little pedal if necessary, maybe even sway from side to side. Fingers by toes, and step the right leg back and meet the right leg onto your blanket if you're using a padded area and then step your left knee onto the padded area and as the hands press below the shoulders or you use other versions of taking care of your wrists ready to breathe in on all fours and as you exhale hollow belly rounding here we go into some of those really definitive pressings away from the earth Inhale, cow, cat. And involve that strong opening of the throat chakra if that suits you. And please, no need to hurry as you exhale. And maybe reach the palms a little further forward and slide your right knee. As you slide the left leg back, not sleeping swan pose, but just kind of halfway in. So your right knee, right shin is pressing. Let's exhale again here and rounding and press away. And then inhale, soften the elbows and flow up. And exhale, rounding. It's almost like you've got a, a tail there. Sliding back and we'll create an extended child's pose and then slide left knee forward. And if you can, lean over those wrists a little bit more, raise the right leg and just try not to collapse, collapse the shoulders, but press and find that strength, push the earth away. And then again, rounding on the exhale. Soften elbows, flowing up on your in-breath. And that can be much stronger or milder. Return to all fours, bring the knees together. And turn your palms so your fingertips turn in towards your knees. So fingers turn in towards the knees, or as best you can. And uh, start to flow energy forward and back. So that's really your range, your decision as to how you sense. So of course I'm stacking shoulders above ribs in the first instance, shoulders above the wrists, and then I'm just leaning in to sway and then releasing back. Inhale, exhale, and then a little circle. 
As you release back, as your buttocks come towards the feet, try to peel the heels of the hands away and you've just got the fingertips in and then you sort of peel away and it lands the other way and your palms are uppermost. And then let's allow some circles, fast, medium or small, large or average or really <laughs> expressive circles of the wrist. Please make this, you can have your thumb thumbs up. So as you make your fist thumbs up and as you place the knuckles down, bring them again directly below the shoulders, press the thumbs forward and then just press away and again maybe create circles so you, you sort of stimulate around and it's also a good idea to roll the knuckles in and the elbows and just roll around the knuckles so you're pressing into those knuckles fists and rolling the palms forward and back and then making a fist with your thumbs inside and similar actions almost like you're massaging across the fingers you can even go right into the elbows press the elbows down and roll across the flesh there um, noticing coming to vajrasana now the kneeling pose press your right foot forward so it's almost like the thinker you know the lovely odo sculpture and then create this position where your forearm and elbow bone rests on top of that knee and open out your palms so we create Surya Mudra, the rays of the sun, the five elements represented in those five forefingers and thumb. And then slide it so that your wrist is leaning back and you open out the palm, it can help that happen. And then curl it in, open it out, curl it, open it, curl it, and then lengthen it out and the same thing. Curl, curl, flexion, extension. And then can you go up and down several times? Try and keep your body in a beautiful seated energy of uprighted, flowing inhale, exhale. So this right arm is, for me, it's becoming super strong. And I'm just keeping the Surya Mudra. So the hand is very, very spread. And as I go in towards the shin with the fingernails and then try and press up to uh, the center, I'm starting to feel that stimulation and really good muscular energy in the muscles of the forearm. And I might wanna soften that now. Let's come up to high kneeling, roll the shoulders, <sighs> connect back to breathing. Sometimes <clears throat> when we're concentrating on new moves, it's really easy to sort of almost suspend the breath. So let's again slide the left foot standing and you can bring your hand to rest. So the wrist is resting on the edge of your knee, create the curling and the opening, Surya Mudra. So you're making a small fist as you breathe and then opening out, squeeze, opening out and then reach the arm forward so that you have this lovely knee shelf for your open arm and create this lovely space in the collarbones, maybe your hand is resting on the right thigh. And then as you spread out your palm as best you can, create curling in and opening. Exhale, curl, inhale, open. And then keep the palm open and can you kind of go up and down? So you're creating an up down action with that wrist, but the hand, it's like a kind of, you know, it's a rather strange waving action and uh, just breathing through that. And notice accessory movement. Are you feeling compelled to bend your elbow? Do you need to take a rest? As we energize the forearm muscles, and feel this opening here, the pit of the elbow. One of the teachers that I was um, attending, one of her sessions, she calls this little pit here, uh, I'm always using fruits, I'm always saying squeeze fruit under the armpits when you're in plank, you know, when we're pressing in plank and we're pressing down, and I'm often saying to my clients, as you know, to squeeze down, but she says this is like a little avocado, maybe you feel it here, like a little, you've got a little 
stone of the avocado as you bend here, but in your armpit, that could feel like the shape of the avocado half. And I thought that was really beautiful imagery. So as we come back to all fours from those little practices, press the palms directly below the shoulders. Make sure your little elbow, your inner elbows face each other. So those inner elbows facing, so rotate the bones over and radius, draw the scapula away. And let's remember that protract and retract we did in standing. So it's like a scapulae press up. So you melt the chest down and then press away. Melt, press, melt, press. And your body should slide up and down. I hope you can see that in the demo. Ah, breathe, breathe, enjoy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the heel of the hand away so that just the four fingers are there. And I'm peeling on the right, trying to keep the arm really steady and releasing, and then peeling on the left and releasing. Peel, release, peel, release. It's like doing little footprints, like I'm a little puppy dog and I'm just trying out, you know, or perhaps I'm just dipping my fingers into a puddle and you create this little walking action on the hands. And then let's curl the toes. Lean back a bit. Can you lift both hands? So you're just on the fingers and you can even put the thumbs in and create this cupping. So it's as if underneath my palm I've got a cup. And then again, I'm going to press and sway back. And then I'm going to really press. I've got very strong fingers and I hope you have too. And really feel that, feel that energy. Let's extend, curl the toes, buttocks towards the feet. Rise up to down face dog. Course, bend your knees or firm the legs. Many of us in this class are experienced enough and flexible enough to firm the legs. Create planks, squeeze the inner toe knuckles of the big toes together, click your heels together, join your knees. Have a look at the alignment through the legs, knees facing, hollow the belly and rounding the back. Inhale, exhale, and roll forward to your plank and then exhale, pick up the tailbone there and try and release back out to down dog press the heels away so you get this lovely four connections these four connections of left right palm left right foot let's go again rolling into plank exhaling and remember that your plank is a wooden danda so in yoga it's a danda which is a staff and the crown is pressing away from the tailbone and you're creating this beautiful parallel body energy for resilience, hugging and rolling back up to down dog. And then slowly, mindfully walk hands towards toes and draping body like a waterfall over the legs in Uttanasana, soften the knees, bring the hands to interlace on the low back waist, shake out your head, clasp hands, hold yoga belt or hook thumbs, drive those arms purposefully up to sky. Can you pull the scapulae away? Have they dropped into your ears? And knees are bent as you rest body onto thighs, ah, deep exhale and maybe the arms travel. Do you need a little bit of a wiggle? Firm the legs, go deeper if that's appropriate to your practice, no forcing. Deep exhaling, ah, maybe have a little laugh down there and then release the fingertips. Walking mindfully left and right. There's a point here where you are probably having wrists under shoulders and uh, it will look different for all of us, but this is Ganeshasana, the elephant pose. And if you pause and notice, it is very elephant-like. And then come into dog momentarily and refine plank, inhale, exhale. Little mini press up for three, two, and one. So you're just bending your elbows and noticing. And if necessary, of course, put Put your knees onto blanket, roll shoulders away, firm the scapulae, squeeze through the legs, maybe bring them together. 
Inhale, exhale, are your elbows winging out as you press? That's okay, I'm just inviting you to explore. Or can you roll in so it's more like plank rod? Try that. And then again, raise up to plank. Maybe you're uh, managing your press ups there. And then let's mindfully walk back, come to the back of your mat again. Breathe as you lift sternum into Adha Uttanasana. Exhale, Ragdala Uttanasana. It's a deep fold. Hold back around the heels. And then again, interlace fingers. Can you undo the interlace and interlace in the unfamiliar way? Connect to the brain. And as you find the depth of this pose, can you please invite staying in welcoming sensations there for three full breath cycle. Letting the blood flow to the eyes, the ears and the throat. Please also notice your skin. Notice that sense of the skin pulling up from the heels. Can you broaden your buttock bones and feel the hamstrings responding well to that? And when you're ready, release the hands forward into Adha Uttanasana. Spread the feet about shoulder wide. Bend into your right knee. Maybe make a fist on the right knuckles and breathe in and open beautifully to the sky. Maybe even lean back. Releasing knuckle of left, bending left knee and open to the right, press the fingers up to the sky, expand. Releasing, let's repeat, if you are able to, as you flow and find this opening of the arms doorway to the heart, you may find you can straighten the legs, you know, you might feel you can place a hand onto the ankle and find a different sense of the pose there. One more side as you repeat again, left knuckles below the left and open to the right, or of course, creating any of your exploratory changes by straightening, firming the legs. But remember that when we straighten legs, we try not to just do it by forcing the knees. Centering as you ragdoll, let's walk back to our feel sense of the elephant, Ganeshdasana, and then into a down face dog. And as you press away, lift the heels, bend the knees, crouching dog, lift the hips, release the heels. Uh, I'm just going to move this blanket to one side. And then step your right foot forward a short distance. Press away through the earth. Pick up the right foot and slide your right palm under the right foot so the toenails touch the wrist and really press in. And as you push the earth away, um, see if you can firm the right arm and notice this resistant press. So you might slide a little bit to the left. So you've got a lot of strength energy going through that left heel, left wrist. You may have to adjust. And then you're pressing. And in fact, I'm going to lift my left heel and just go in a little bit deeper to the press. Uh, you can explore this. So I've just lifted up and I'm coming into a balance actually. I'm just noticing as that left leg sails. So I've got left palm down, left leg lifted, and my right hand is trapped under my right foot. <laughs> Release that. And wiggle that out, and you know what? I would suggest maybe a child's pose or a kneeling pose just to observe how you responded to those new uh, instructions and, and that way of guiding yourself into a very uh, fun and unusual down pose dog. Let's roll it out. So it's like Padahastasana, hand to foot pose. Let's go and explore second side if we wish. And if you don't wish to, you can just pop the back palms on the mat and press them in this way. And it gives you a similar feel sense. 
Let's rise to down face dog, fully expand in all directions. Now bring the left foot in a little bit. Just so you'll have to explore this and then pick up the foot and bring the left hand underneath, press it. Now you may have to keep your left knee bent and you may have to keep your elbow bent, but can you straighten everything and adjust so that you have four connections Kind of feels like three. So we've got the right palm pressing away, release the head and neck, right foot pressing. The left is really, literally standing on the hand. Now if I put more pressure on, I wonder if I can pick up my right foot and leg and balance. Just let that right leg sail away a little bit. <sighs> Breathe and feel, belly muscles are on. And, uh, you know, just as much of that as you can enjoy <laughs> a little toppling over almost there for me but of course standing on my deformed left hand is probably not ideal so let's continue with that or allow a break any amount of shaking and then when you're ready pull your body forward onto the yoga mat <laughs> extend the legs away and slide the palms beside the nipples or the low ribs or under the shoulders, hug the elbows in, very neutral neck. So create that environment where your crown is the crown chakra, Sahaswara lengthening from the tail, pull shoulders back and just float away. So hands actually hover and we're finding Makarasana, the crocodile, which is beautifully strengthening in the spinal zone. Inhale, exhale, perhaps you raise a tiny bit higher and then release arms back, fingers towards the legs and toes and lay your cheek down and as you roll your legs, toes can be tucked or legs long. Inhale, exhale and enjoy. Let's release and again slide hands close to body hands by waist low ribs under shoulders or nipples lightly press away maybe look into heart or lengthen crown remember if you look into your heart that is lovely for flexion of your neck and that might feel super beautiful and then just raise the toes feet and ideally your heels are in line with your elbows can you clear the knees and feel the thighs just reaching back? Hover the arms, hover the palms, neutral neck. Just a little bit of rocking side to side, a little bit of massage on the belly if you can handle that. And then you can release the feet and toes down. Bring the hands under shoulders or let's say by your jawbone or cheeks in line with that. And inhale, exhale, press up to cobra, roll shoulders back. And then lowering and readjust, or choose Sphinx Asana instead. And if you're choosing Sphinx, maybe bring the palms into a soft namaste. Let's gaze at the thumbs, roll the shoulders back. So everybody, please enjoy the choice you've made and be here in this present moment, connecting to breath, body, mind, emotions, and energy. Cobra pose Bhushangasana, meaning one who crawls across the earth. Or you have found a Sphinx Asana, and you may have even chosen at this point to move into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, the up-facing dog. So if your experience leads you to desire that, try that now. And then everybody find time to let arms flow back and turn the other cheek, fully resting, softening face, neck and shoulders. What tingling are you feeling, if any? Curl the toes now, 
clear your knees so pull your thighs away so they start to activate hands under shoulders press up to plank inhale exhale and take a moment here to set this new plank pose and your hips just please don't let them drop and sag so gather that pelvic core up into your awareness so that the hips drive away from those armpits and then carefully slide your right elbow down and find the L shape and then slide the left so you come in to your forearm plank breathe in breathe out and then again left under drive yourself back up to your plank inhale exhale this is very heating so I'm going to go left and right down <laughs> try not to collapse and then left and right presses back and then right comes down left comes down and right and left presses back and that's a beautiful way of creating and maintaining really good upper back and shoulder strength so offer that to yourself perhaps twice more and remember to breathe and then what we'll do is we'll all find our forearm plank by interlacing things together reaching the legs back I personally quite like to sway forward and back in the forearm plank you might want to try that and I also like to spiral the hips to the side and just flow out into side forearm plank lifting hips these are options feet are stacking and then I'm going back to clasp and just reset the pose flip over and lift the hips stacking you might want to make a fist with your left hand if that helps remember that if this way of transitioning from center and over to your side elbow plank isn't working then pop your knees down and rest in child's pose or find a way to travel around your mat that really is suiting your needs this morning so from those open your knees from those and now settle in to pose of child or elbow sound what I call kitten pose open up the thighs it's okay to stay with the open knees but you can also bring your knees together I'm going to slide my left arm forward now and thread my right arm through and just come into child thread reach the left arm over and soften in close the arms can you also press your left hand so you really find that the right arm slides underneath you and you are yielding to mother earth let's have slide back rise a little bit into intention left arm slides under for thread left ear on the mat reach the right arm forward settle what can you soften here and fully release with compassion find regular balasana with thighs together float extend or reach arms down and forward and then both arms reach to the left so as you reach arms left sit lift hips and slide hips to the right <sighs> create some resistance and we get this lovely lateral opening in fact i'm going to move my left arm further left and reach the right arm a little bit further away and create that cupping action of the palm that we used earlier in the warm-ups just in the head exhale <sighs> breathe out through mouth if necessary slide back Com commanding if you like this reaching uh, controlling it if you like to think of it that way or flow the arms behind and they sit by your buttocks or by your feet and forehead rests classical balasana the embryo pose said to induce self-reflection and compassion and it's also a pose of supreme safety if it feels like that for you 
Let's extend the arms again, swing them to the right, sit the buttocks to the left, and then sit back into your lateral side pose, known as Parshva Balasana, so side leaning child's pose. Inhale, exhale, fullness of breath blossoming. Come back to centre when you're ready. Rise up, kneeling salute, open. And bring the hands behind birdie wings. Press the knees into earth or cover the blanket zone. And lift heart. And if it's in your general practice and you're very flowish today, then of course, invitation to find a camel, Ustrasana. Some of us might just want to stay here. Inhale, exhale, enjoy. Ustrasana, the camel pose, or kneeling back bend as an alternate. Extend the arms forward now, refinding down face dog, press the earth away. And sweep your right leg up into sky, three leg dog. And as you begin to spiral the right hip and that left leg can be fully engaged with earth, bring your left elbow in and down. So the left elbow comes in underneath and the right arm reaches away and push the mat away. You can even grab the mat and stretch the mat away. So from the right toes to the right fingers, but what a beautiful energy we find on the left calf and hamstring. Spiral your ribs. This is known as turbo dog. And then release very carefully. And wow, I love that pose. And it is from um, Arna Forest. Forest with a double R, it's from Forest Yoga. Let's release to second side. If you're joining me, press the palms, rise up to a beautiful down face dog. Bring the feet to midline maybe. Curl and let yourself blossom into one leg dog and press earth away into a lovely splits energy. And then bring your right forearm slightly in and down. Creates a little twist. And then you can grab, mat grab, through the left side and spiral around. You might find you want to bend the knee and maybe even your forehead comes close to the earth and lengthen that left side as much as possible. Notice the beautiful energy of flexibility in that right leg <coughs> as you release slowly and settle. Now we will bring our blanket back if you had moved it to your side and pop the knees on because we're high kneeling and we're going to stack the shoulders above the hips. You may even have a yoga block or brick near you. Slide your right leg out to the right and press open. We've just really opened the legs in that dog splits. Tip over and finding easy gait and then flow the other way. Exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. <sighs> Lovely flow. And as we come back here, yes, of course, you can raise that leg and it feels kind of plank, you know, like side plank energy. But I'm going to keep the leg down and slide it, press the foot, and then flow into rotation and thread. Inhale, exhale, flow and thread. And inhale out and exhale, thread. And then press the palms down so that I spiral into a plank and then come onto my left foot and add Vashistasana here. Join me if you wish, lift the hips high, stacking the feet, or bring the right foot in front. Let's release down, knees down. Inhale, exhale, come back ready for opening gate. On the other side, I'm just going to take an opening gateway to the heart. <sighs> Centering as best you can, left foot out to the side, toes facing forward or heel up. Lovely anchoring is working well for my hips. Tip to the side with grace, elegance, flow. Fly up, energize. 
and flow and fly. And maybe you land here and that feels good. And I'm going to anchor now that left foot down, create space. Take the arm up to the sky, exhale, bend and thread. Twist, press and open. Maybe move that leg. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And then release to plank. Press the palms again under the shoulders. Take the body to face the mat. Remember, this can be done with knees down as well. And I'm going to tip over to the right side, stack the feet, open up, lift the hips high, and take the left arm over the ear. Fullness of breath. Inhale, exhale, release, knees down. And sitting in kneeling, Vajrasana or seated cross leg. My choice at this point is Virasana. Inhale, exhale, bring the arms wide, right arm over left, eagle. And as you close your eyes, or gaze at the thumbnails with the double wrap, if that's complex for you today, single binding. And completely surrender to your seat. Eyes are closed or open. Maybe you want to fold. If your natural state now is to dip down into a little fold, then add that. Or of course, stay upright because to be truthful, your breathing will be um, <laughs> assisted by the upright spine. Remember the breath only lives for this moment. So let's connect to the here and now through this very breath. And remember that your mind does want to keep chatting to you. And the chattering mind is how we know about the primary goal of yoga through Patanjali Sutras, Chitta, Nitta, Virod to stop the incessant turnings of the mind, to be yogic, to understand the process of yoga, to be in a state of yoga. Inhale, open wide. Exhale, left arm on top of right eagle. Settle into folding or lifting or relaxing arms. Maybe the arms just press on the chest and you're, you're okay with that feeling. So connect deeply to your expression of your eagle. And of course you can kneel high if it's a problem to calves or feet. If you're in Virasana, remember the tops of the feet are really grounded and there's internal rotation of the femur bones. One more focused breath here. And then unravel, easy side bend. But with, but with attention, followed by rotation. And you might want to linger a little bit more in rotation because today in our flow, there wasn't a, a deep element of rotation in the practice. And as you unravel from that seat, feel free to come into hip opening, seated Sukhasana, or please choose now to lay down in supine semi or Shavasana, arranging your pillows, cushions, and your um, supportive props. So you can close your rise and shine practice today with seated breathing, optimum breathing and meditation as we're going into that now. Or it might feel really appropriate to you to lay with your arms out and support the back of the head. And of course, offer a floor twist. Even your floor twist can now become very lazy and languid. It doesn't have to be lots of doing things really 
to the peak of your ability. I love to lay down at the end of a practice and just massage the back in a light way. But even if I'm uh, adding that into my practice, I finish with a choice of sitting or full Shavasana. And uh, please make that choice now. So any appropriate movements you require, you might even want to add in a little, little uh, moment in Setu Bandhasana, the yoga bridge. And then finding your stillness now, please. Settling into your closing pose with yogic concentration. Yoga concentration is different from being at your device or working. It doesn't require layers and layers of intellect. It doesn't require communication with others and brainstorming and to-do lists. What it invites is not for you to become empty skulls and empty headed, but simply invite to the recognition that the mind and the thoughts are not always discriminatory, they're not always the truth. And can we lose, as yoga says, the veils of illusion? And can we seek at this moment the body welcoming stillness and relaxation? Because this is that bridge, the breath forms the bridge between the body and the mind and as we enter our stillness in seated or lying, we scan the body, we are able to calm the mind through regular practice. Remember that we're not going to sleep, we're falling awake, we're falling into deeper consciousness. Allow your buttocks, legs to spread, if that's appropriate. Flow energy out through soft arms and into relaxed palms. Can you allow your pose to create open heart, open mind? Let your shoulders melt. How is your head and neck? You might want to lightly roll the head and neck on the earth if you're lying. And then centering the head. Closing eyes, finding palms resting on belly or chest, or seated palms on lap or mudra. As the breath only lives for this very moment, let's again connect to the here and now. Breathe in fully, expand in all directions. Pause. One, two, three. And exhale, slow and deep. So we're closing with the pausing breath. The pause is representing that moment in your life that you cherish when you give yourself the pause button. And you pause to connect to the still point. And we automatically breathe 24 seven. There is a pause between the in and out breath and there's another pause between the out in breath. But what we're doing now, please offer the elongated pause between the in and the out breath and see how that feels. Remember, we 
began our class today with a sense of animal grooming visualization. Now let's call upon the animal kingdom again, flare the nostrils, maybe think of a tiger or a beautiful wild cat, a nice one, not a scary one. <laughs> and inhale and flare the nostrils and really open up the Nadi channels. Pause, count one, two, three seconds. And then exhale, slow, deep and control. And if you can prolong your exhalation, that is also optimum for evoking the rest and digest state, the parasympathetic nervous system. So I'm gonna leave you now quietly to continue that relaxation for the next four minutes or so. Practicing the three part breath and the pranayama is Antir Kumbhaka, the held in retention breath. Said to help calm the nervous system and therefore calm the incessant chattering of the mind state. If you wish to continue your three-part breath, please do so. Or let that go now and observe quietly your natural conscious yoga breath cycles flowing in and out. Let those breath take you in deeper to surrender and yielding. Is there anywhere else you can soften? Have you noticed where you are holding on, where you are able to let go. Do that now. particularly notice the interior of the mouth, teeth, the lips, the tongue, no gripping, clenching the jaw. Now quietly open eyes if they were closed and of course pause to bring awareness to all sensations or thoughts, feelings, mood and mindfully Tuck knees and roll to your side, resting on your side for a breath cycle. Mindfully, please come to sitting and let's close with palming again. 
but this time the classical yoga palming. So really rubbing those palms to create friction and heat is a lovely practice for a winter's day or any winter season yoga. And then place the heels of the hands over the eyes, the eyelids are closed. Soft inhale, exhale, stack shoulders above the pelvis and then open your eyes. Feel that heat penetrate the eyeballs. Bring your palms into heart center. Gratitude for your presence here. Give yourself thanks for being here. Namaste yogis, have a beautiful weekend. Thank you.